Hello ladies and gentlemen, Fuzzfinger here and in today's episode of Final Fantasy XII we're continuing on with our story walkthrough and we're going to begin by exploring the final southern section of the Fey Woods and then moving on to bigger things including a puzzle that we're going to need to solve. So stay tuned and let's get on with today's show. Okay, first things first. I didn't mention at the end of the last episode, I, I did forget, I apologise. But around here you can spawn a one-time loot chest, which contains the embroidered tippet, which is a good accessory that doubles your experience on the character. It's equipped on, so you'll want to throw that on as soon as possible. I'm going to go and put it on Pinello here, replacing what she used for the boss fight. And that will just help her boost up her levels, so she can catch up with the others. And then I'll probably give it to Fran or somebody after that. And we're going to then head down south where there's another couple of chests that can spawn one time only in this area. There's one over here. Containing a bottle of Domain Calvados. You can get plenty of that from the uh, trials as well, so it's not that important. Wow, I just saw Vard running through the mists. Kind of cinematic style, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and you can get another chest spawn right down south here. There it is. That one just contains an X potion, uh, but those chests spawn 100% of the time, uh, but not the one with the embroidered tippet. That only spawns one out of four times. So I'm just going to check that that's the one I've actually looted, actually. Maybe I got an embroidered tippet from somewhere else, I can't remember. Well, check that out. It turns out I hadn't looted this chest as I thought I had. So there's the embroidered tippet, which means I've now got two. So I'm quite happy about that. I must have got the first one from the trials or something, so I don't remember looting it. I mean, I might have done. I just don't remember if I did where that uh, exactly was. Right, so there's a couple of other chests in here that you're going to want to know about that are one-time spawn, along with some other chests that aren't necessarily uh, one-time spawn. But the ones that are, are basically 100% uh, spawn chance, so they will be here if you haven't looted them already. And we just need to head down to the actual next area. Would be helpful, wouldn't it? So this is the secret area, isn't it? Which is why you're basically not seeing it show up on the map, even though we collected the map at the end of the last episode. These guys can hurt, by the way. And they can even cast Reflect. So not Reflect, Shell, Protect and Haste, I believe. So just bear that in mind. You'll probably want to get that dispelled if they do. Oh, they can cast Reflect. I know this is the other enemy type. Watch out for the trap. High Potion. That's not one of the one-time spawn chests. First one of those is just below this kind of holy section on the map there. There it is. That's the one-time spawn chest. Let's just kill this guy first. And you do want to get this. Dispelgar, lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, I'm just going to see, apart from Ash, if anybody else can go ahead and use this. Unfortunately, I don't think that uh, Fran's going to be able to. So, But you can see what it does. It removes beneficial status effects from all foes in range. So that's going to come in pretty darn useful. Uh, Fran will be able to use this. But I'm not sure if I give another license yet. Yeah, I have. So I won't equip it for now. And let's just move on down. There's another one time spawn chest. Ah, oh, look. Another urn. Forgot all about that with another map. Uh, this one for the Favoured Candle. So all the hidden areas have now been revealed for us. Very, very nice indeed. And in this crevice round here is where we'll come across our second one time spawn chest. So don't miss this one. Game with a hundred percent pop chance if you've not looted it before. Guarded by these basilisks, though, makes things interesting, doesn't it? Uh, right, Pinello is actually level forty-five at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the embroidered tripit. Oh, we've got two actually, haven't we? So I don't need to. Gonna have to say goodbye to the ribbon for the time being. 
but XP is too good at the moment since we are trying to catch everybody up here. This one for a golden amulet, which basically increases your um, LP rate. And you can grab the Rhyme Fang as well. And then we're going to be solving a puzzle in the next area. So just bear that in mind. Penella will wake up from all this stuff she's been afflicted with in a moment. Uh, although we should have thrown a Kronos tier actually onto her by now. Ah, there you go. Look, she's fine now. Absolutely fine. Okay, now this is where things unfortunately get a little bit confusing. We do have a bit of a puzzle here. And unfortunately it's a random puzzle. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Explain to you how to do it. But um, it's going to work a little bit differently in your own game. Because uh, the directions and whatnot are going to be randomly generated. Just grab some tea here. So you can see on the map there's these star shaped patterns. We're going to head to the first one. It doesn't matter which one you go to. Because as I say the puzzle is going to be randomly generated. But just kill the enemies on the way. Because otherwise they're going to basically interfere uh, with the puzzle. And you're going to start getting lost. In fact we can even do this uh, star. It makes no difference whatsoever. Just make sure there's no enemies around. Oh, here's one look. Just kill all this. I don't want to clear out the area at this point, but uh, looks like we're going to end up doing so. No, no we're not. Right then. So what we're going to do is step into the centre here. And you're hoping to get uh, a kind of activation sequence button thingy. But as you can see, we haven't. Nothing's popped up saying we can press anything. Which means this is the wrong star puzzle. Now, unfortunately, as I say, it is randomly generated. So that might not be the wrong one for you. So you will have to check them all. And the enemies are frequent in this particular area. Just to annoy us, I think, isn't it? Now, this is the right one because we've got a pattern on the floor. So just make sure the enemies aren't going to interrupt us here kill this thing quickly so what we're going to do is slow things down a touch and you can activate the fabled glyph now it could appear on any of the star patterns so you'll have to just try them all out until you find the one with this pattern we examine the pattern we get a bit of dialogue which tells us that illusion betokens the true way and you can see now that we get some grass as you move the camera around, it kind of goes in and out of focus. That is the path that we want to take. And that is the path to the next correct star pattern. So, make sure you're facing the right direction. Then, check on the map. Because as you fight enemies, uh, you're going to turn your party leader around. You're going to forget which way you are facing. So, I know that the most northern western uh, star pattern is the one we're going to want to head to. So, it doesn't matter now. If I get lost on the way, or if we kill enemies, uh, I know which one it is that we're going to be heading to. And you do have to head to the correct one, okay? But you can grab some treasure chests, including a one-time spore treasure, uh, which is around here. Don't think it's that one, actually. Uh, it could be, but I don't think it is. Let me just check what the one-time spore treasure is around this region. Uh, it's a bubble belt, and it is in the centre, roughly. So maybe we'll just go and grab it. It's down there. I don't want to go too far from the correct star pattern. So as you can see, the pattern is there. Illusion betokens the true way once more. And now we're going to look for the green. There it is. Now you have to be careful because it doesn't always appear depending on your camera angle. Okay, so there you can see it's it's not showing up. So just look straight ahead and you'll, you should see it. And we can see the uh, direction we're heading towards is down to the southern western star. So we're going to head over there next. Just kill some of these annoying nuisances on the way of course. There's the next 
star pattern. So hopefully you're getting a taste now of what this puzzle is about, as in how to do it. So again, we're going to examine. And you might be surprised to see that it's uh, not showing up. The reason for that is that we're actually going to have to head to one of the ones in the uh, next area. So we'll make Barn uh, the right direction here. And it looks like it's probably going to be the centre one. Although it could be the end one, I guess, in the bottom southwestern area. But we'll head to the centre one and see if it's there. But before we do that, I do want to just check out for that one time spawn treasure chest. And this could be the one. Yeah, that's it, a bubble belt. Bubble belt's a very, very powerful accessory, by the way. Basically doubles the uh, wearer's health. In fact, many would say it's one of the strongest accessories on encounters that don't require uh, a ribbon. So if you don't have a lot of status effects, then the bubble is particularly useful. Okay, so here's the next shrine. And it's pretty much the same thing again, the Feywood Glyph. We're going to examine the pattern once more. Illusion betokens the true way. So once again, we're just going to look around here. Ah, there we go. It looks like we're going just to the one to the north of us from this particular location. And just to make things easier, let me just make sure we are going the right direction here. Okay, so we're actually going to the corner. There you go, look, it does help to check. Uh, once you've examined the shrine, the correct shrine, it does mark it on the map so you know it's done. Which obviously is particularly helpful. Yeah. I'm also just going to check for spawn treasures one time versions while we're in this particular area. And there's two. I'm just going to tell you what they are in a moment. They are Defender and Reflectigar. So it would be nice if we could go ahead and grab those whilst we're in this particular area. So this is going to be the next one. The illusion be taken the true way. Yes, we know that already. All oh, these enemies are just interfering. Okay, so it's this one. Which means we're heading down south. To the one right down the bottom. And there's also one of the first one-time spawn treasure chests on the way. And it's on a trap. How wonderful. So if you cast flow that would be helpful but I can't there's reflect gar which is the AOE version of reflect of course yes. there's also a couple of other treasures that can spawn down here but they're just items so I'll see if there's any really close Kill this guy as well because he's bound to interrupt us, isn't he? He looks like the interrupting type. Examine the pattern. There it is. Now that looks weird, doesn't it? Because it basically. Uh, it's facing the wrong way, at least you assume it was. The reason for that is that there are only six shrines in total that we need to activate. And so what that is doing now is pointing us to the zone exit. And the reason it's doing that is if uh, we're now actually able to cross the zone line, whereas if we did this uh, puzzle wrong or if we messed up or we didn't do it, then exiting this zone would actually take us right back 
to the start of the zone so we'll just be looping round. Uh, but before I do take that exit, I do just want to grab the other um, one time spawn treasure chest, which you can just see in the corner there. This is the defender. Come on. There we go. And then we're going to make our way over to the western side where the shrine was pointing us. But don't get too excited. Just because we're crossing into a new zone doesn't mean that's the end of the puzzle. So we'll go ahead and touch the gate here. Okay, we actually have reached the end of this puzzle, um, so that's good, uh, but there's a, another puzzle really in how you actually open this gate. Now it's talking about a Gigas, it's called the Gate Gigas, and if we read the inscription here, it tells us that Gigas Summoner Gate's power is yours to claim. Beyond the one gate lies sacred Gira Vegan. Over the one gate, the Gigas hold sway. Basically, if you don't know what it's talking about, and you can see it will not do anything, uh, you need to summon Belias. And I'm just going to check. I think it's Fran that's got that's got Belias. Yep. Belias is the Gigas. And now we can go ahead and touch the gate. And open it. And we're going to get some cutscenes here, so sit back and enjoy. On the farthest shores of the River of Time, shrouded deep in the roiling mist. What is it, Fran? The mist runs thick here. Like on the Leviathan? Do not worry. I will behave myself. The mist here is... cold. I sense something like the shadow here. Fenar. It appears Sid has yet to arrive. We'll lie in wait for him here. So we're not going inside? Not unless you want to end up twisted. Like the old man. Something there. What is it? She can see him. Let's follow her. Okay, so this is quite a substantial area of the game that we've reached at this particular point. And we're not going to be able to explore the whole lot uh, on our first visit. But we're going to start by heading straight forward here. 
And the first thing we're going to notice of note, which is particularly useful, is a new orange crystal. So we can permanently add the ancient city of Girivagan to our repertoire of fast travel destinations. And then we can move on ahead and do more story. So I'm going to finish up here today, folks. I hope this video has been helpful to you in teaching you how to solve that previous puzzle in the Feywood. And if it has, then please do consider leaving a like for this video. And I look forward to joining you again soon when we continue on with Final Fantasy XII. Right, I'm off to go and have some lunch now. Goodbye all.